What a beautiful night for women's college soccer right here at Johnson Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. It's the UNC Greensboro Spartans fresh off a win to open SOCON play, taking on the darlings of the American Athletic Conference, the East Carolina Pirates. Final weekend of non-conference play, and these two are gearing up for a wonderful match tonight. Thank you for joining us here in the broadcast booth. I'm Evan Budrovich. We told you non-conference play ends tonight. Well, for East Carolina, they want to continue a red-hot start in the conference. 2-0 in league play, led by a top 40 scoring defense in the country. UNC Greensboro, meanwhile, the offense has picked up for Michael Cole's club in year nine. Three goals on Friday night, including the senior captain getting things started. Maddie Gilhul was fantastic in the win over VMI. Notched her fifth goal of the year and led the charge for this offense. A Greensboro team that's picked right near the top of the SOCON this year. And there you see Maddie, the leading scorer for this bunch. Five goals, five of the 12 for the Spartans. As she goes, this offense goes in the eyes of the head coach, Michael Cole, out of Dublin, Ireland. She'll look to score against an elite defense in the American Athletic Conference, led by the netminer, Junior Maeve English. She grew up here in Greenville and on Thursday night pitched her fifth shutout of the season. That's a new career record for the junior keeper. And as we tell you, shutouts are always a team effort, but Maeve was excellent. Multiple saves against Houston on Thursday. Here she is against Old Dominion a couple of weeks prior. And English notched her 16th career win. She has been excellent. Helped out by a really strong defensive back line. Those four center backs have combined five shutouts and a little team effort on defense. Gary Higgins noted his team's ability to deflect shots and make things difficult was huge for his team's defensive presence. They have pitched two straight wins the American and have really been good. One goal allowed in league play. They look to flip the script under Coach Higgins. When we come back, starting lineups and the head coaches when we return from Greenville, Greensboro, East Carolina, when we come back. Welcome back to Greenville, North Carolina. Seventh all-time meeting, the Spartans of UNCG and the Pirates of East Carolina. The home squad 
Here's the starting 11 for head coach Gary Higgins. Boy, have they been good here at home. Four and two here at Johnson Soccer Stadium. A couple of changes to note tonight. Holly Schlegel out with a knee injury, not available at that midfield position. And Carson Parker, the striker, not starting tonight. So Isabella Gutierrez pushes up for Gary Higgins' lineup. And you see Peyton Godby. She'll be more of a defensive midfielder, but shifting into that midfield role for Gary Higgins' club tonight. A defense that's been really good. Only seven goals allowed this year in front of Maeve English. We noted her in the pregame, the all-conference keeper. That's a really good defense for ECU. All four starters back there on the back line. And taking on a UNC Greensboro team that wants a win. But Gary Higgins, the head coach for the Pirates, he knows it's about consistency. He noted last week his team might have been a bit fatigued, maybe overlooked William and Mary just a bit. And a Greensboro club that wants to challenge Gary Higgins' team. Note the 90 wins. He talked to us this week about returning to prominence of the playoffs for the Pirates. With 2-0 in the league, they have been a real threat in the AAC and now want to manufacture that in the non-conference play for the winningest coach all time at Lenore Ryan as he gears up for his squad tonight. Gary was all business on our call this week, but always a happy camper. There's Michael Cole, the ninth-year head coach at Greensboro, two-time champion in the SoCon, and has a club he thinks can compete for a title this year with Sanford and Furman among the lead favorites in the Southern Conference. Cole was an All-American at Penn State in the early 90s, and he knows his squad's ready to go tonight. So with that, the whistle blows, and we get this party started here in Greenville. Mark Buda, our lead referee tonight. So we'll keep tabs on that. Remember the Pirates without Carson Parker, their top scorer. She will not start due to rest, and she might come in in the second half, so we'll keep tabs on that. An ECU team, a 1-0 victory on Thursday over Houston. An early foul here on Delaney Stevens, the midfielder for Greensboro. Talking to Gary Higgins this week, he said, most of our recruits have seen them with talent, but to watch Jasmine Ferguson, the freshman, shine with that goal against Houston, it was incredible. They did not get to watch her very much on the recruiting trail. She was one of the freshmen that due to COVID and, and restrictions, they couldn't see her play live, but she has really impressed the first year staff. So now Sierra Lowry will send it in. Early chance in the first minute and deflected away. UNC Greensboro in front of the keeper, Abby Buckholtz pitched the shutout and this will be the challenge for the Spartans. You see Buckholtz here, the senior keeper able to get some help Actually, that was Parker Sakura, the junior defender of Elk Grove, California, with the stop. Greensboro's played a tough non-conference schedule. Harvard, Liberty, and Duke, NCAA tournament teams from a year ago. Both these squads have difficult schedules. RPI-wise, top 100 in the country with opponent's record. And now turning for goal. This is centered away and cleared. Nice boot out by Sakura and an ECU throw. Gary Higgins noted last Sunday in a non-conference match against William Mary, his team played a bit flat in the first 45 minutes. He noted he wanted his team to be on the front foot early in this matchup and avoid that complacency that may have cost him on Sunday. As that's cleared out by Chloe Lazell, the sophomore defender. Both teams a bit defensive-minded over the years. UNC Greensboro graduated one of its top all-time leading scorers, Sierra Rideout, 30 career goals. She has gone from the squad, and the last two years have been tough finding offense as this ball's left in a dangerous position. And Lozell plays it back to her keeper, Buckholtz. Abby has split the time with Emma Malone this year, a senior and a freshman, trading starts. This will be the 10th start for Buckholtz out of New Hartford, New York. And when she's played, pretty good. Five career shutouts and a 1.4 goals against average. Coach Michael Cole described her as the athletic and can jump out of the building goalkeeper. Really quick, really strong and physical. Whereas Malone has those cat-like reflexes. She's the Tua Tunga Vailoa of this team. When she gets the opportunity, she's been really good.
Greensboro struggling to maintain possession. You see East Carolina pushing bodies forward in this first half. They capitalized late. Jasmine Ferguson with a game winner. 1-0 victory over Houston. And now a goal kick awarded. Good defense there by Parker Sakura. Annabelle Abbott will be asked to do a lot more offensively today. Carson Parker, who has a team high, four goals and eight in her career. She will not start tonight and will most likely do to rest, not be a major factor in this game. It, it is the challenge of having non-conference games so early as English scoops that up in her box. Managing rest versus reward as these teams do want to finish non-conference play with points. Because when you look at the RPI conversation right now, East Carolina at 76th in the country. They could, if they went out and obviously continue a strong play in the conference, could have a at-large resume. Now, easier said than done with still a month to go in the season. But something Gary Higgins noted, he wants his team to be in the hunt, both as a conference champ and as an at-large opponent. Greensboro, meanwhile, they want to return to the top of the mountain. Two Southern Conference championships in 17 and 18, back-to-back -back years. And they averaged 13 wins in those seasons. Michael Cole's been the general for that. Nine years for the former Penn State All-American. It's been a neat story. His top assistant, Jeff Gross, he took the job at Campbell as the head coach this summer. And Cole has replaced plentifully with Stefani Workman, her, his associate head coach and the goalkeeper coach. And then Mitch Williams, his new hire from App State, former player and assistant for the Mountaineers. He's now a big part of this coaching staff working with the midfield. Here's the game-winning goal scorer, Jasmine Ferguson. Her first career goal for the true freshman. Now Brzezinski plays it along to Abbott. Abbott back to Brzezinski, who lets it fly. And a bit wide on her first attempt. So Greensboro comes in, nodding a perfect shutout. And Brooke wanted to erase that tally here early, but a bit off. East Carolina, and to their credit in this stretch, points in seven of the last eight matches. Well, they've scored multiple goals all in that stretch, so they've been explosive as a scoring team. And now the Spartans with Santora bring it up the pitch. Gabby Santora gets the corner here on Godby and knocks it out for the throw. Peyton Godby, who started 13 matches last year. You see her right there, the sophomore from Leland, North Carolina. She'll move into that defensive assignment tonight with the injury to Holly Schlegel, the defensive midfielder, injured her knee on Thursday. She'll be out for the season, so it'll be a rotating set of bodies in that central midfield to defensive role. Gary Higgins noted that's one of the strengths of this team, however, is the midfield, especially at the center mid position. So while he is certainly hopeful that players return healthy, he knows that he can afford some depth and a few losses at that center midfield role. Easier said, you know, one weekend than trying to do it a month or six, seven matches without a top player like Holly Schlegel. So Eliza Radol plays it back. The center back and returning starter on defense at a Fairfax, Virginia. Greensboro's high press has caused issues. The Pirates have been really good at forcing opponent turnovers on their defensive end. There's Gary Higgins chipping it back into play. Gary played for the USL Premier Development League in Knoxville, the Knoxville Force, back a decade prior. As that ball lazily rolls in to Abby Buckholtz. She has a long wingspan and a very aggressive keeper on the service there from Catherine Holbrook.
Another good crowd in attendance tonight. Four wins on the home tenure. And a program that's received seven national votes in the coaches poll as early as last week. Now they have their work cut out for them to maintain that position. We'll note throughout the night, the top 25 is littered with some American athletic teams, including SMU and the Pirates earning votes as well. I wouldn't sleep on Memphis to make a late run. Club that's 4-3-2 and two entering the week, and they were the reigning champs of the AAC. Good dispossession there from Brzezinski. And both teams playing back and forth with it as that's booted out by Sierra Lowry. Here's Parker's Sakura, 40th career match for Parker. The lone California native on this Greensboro roster. Double-digit states represented for Michael Cole, who reigns from Dublin, Ireland. Him and his wife, Katie, who were married right around the time he took the job in Greensboro, 2010. It's been a tough league in the SoCon over the years. Sanford has won the regular season eight of the last nine years. Now, the tournament title has been up for grabs, yet in that 12-year stretch, only four teams have won the tournament title. Furman, Greensboro, Mercer, and this Sanford team that has dominated the conference. Good dispossession there by Allie Hackett, who then gives it right back. Keep a listen out to the two foreign-born coaches, Gary Higgins and Michael Cole, both with British descent from Scotland and Ireland. The energy and enthusiasm and the accents on the benches are always tantalizing to listen to. Makes for good fun on a Sunday afternoon. Here's a turn for goal as McDougal sends it wide. Greensboro won a tough match on Friday at VMI in not ideal conditions. They overcame a sloppy pitch, but scored three goals and took advantage. Goals from Gilhul, Sakura, and Ricks to dominate VMI to open up SoCon play. We noted the Pirates, their best start in the AAC in 10 years since they were in a different conference. They were in the Conference USA at the time. And it goes right back to Delaney Stevens. How do these teams settle down, find their rhythm on this Sunday? We noted the Pirates playing without two starters in Holly Schlegel and Carson Parker. What they have done is not just seven, three, and one start. Very impressive for first year head coach Gary Higgins. Here's Abby Soa, one of the anchors of this defense that has allowed only seven goals this year. Top 50 in best scoring defenses in the country. You look at the overall team defense. They're right up there, second in the AAC. And goals against average trailing Mississippi State for the best scoring defense in the country as Gutierrez sneaks in. And Buckholtz is tested. Well, good defense all around as Buckhold saves the first goal here, 13 minutes in. And Gutierrez had a nice forward touch. She was one shot away from putting in the game's opening goal. Uh, the lengthy Abby Buckhold at 5'9 and a six foot wingspan there, knock it down. Through ball, tapped by Hannah Morton. The Noblesville, Tennessee product. And sent wide to Gilhul. Gilhul lets it fly. And sorry, that was Gabby Santora a bit ambitious on that effort. And you see the confidence here in Santora through four defenders. 
Gabby scored her third career goal on Friday. She's played in 52 matches, highly contributing to the success of UNC Greensboro. It's tough this senior class watched and inherited the conference champions. And now for the home squad, East Carolina, they have been off to their best start in the conference. And Gary Higgins said even after a win, this team is wired up to watch film and continue that success. They're not settling on that hot start. Gary told us he was staying up till 2 a.m. on Friday morning watching the tape. Get Ella Ford to take the gas off the brakes. We saw that last Sunday. William and Mary came in here and had success. Limited East Carolina and handed the Pirates their first loss in a month. As Soa sends it into the box. Looks promising. Buck holds. Plays it on a hop. And a smart play there from the senior goalkeeper. One area that Michael Cole really emphasizes for his Greensboro defense is goalkeepers who can play the ball at their feet. And that's been a strength of Emma Malone, the freshman who will not start tonight. But Buckholtz is improving in that factor. She works extensively with Stephanie Workman, the associate head coach, as there's a giveaway for Gutierrez, who now plays it forward to Schnell. Out wide to Brzezinski. Brooke one-on-one -on -one with Hackett is tripped. Hackett looks for another swipe, and Brzezinski sends it in. Here's Godby. Holbrook turns. The chip is high, headed away, and Hackett saves a goal. Boy, East Carolina pressing. Here's 16 minutes in, and a foul goes the other way. Well, how about this sequence? Chance one. Leads to a promising second chance here. And a sharp play by Allie Hackett, the Charlotte Catholic product. Charlotte Catholic, one of the state powers in North Carolina independent soccer, by the way. Won five state titles in the last decade. Really good program. As Hannah Morton called for the handball. That might be the best chance to defeat Maeve English, who earned her fifth shutout on Thursday night. And that's a new single season record for Maeve, the junior keeper. Talked to Gary Higgins this week, and he said Maeve English, she has the direction and the vision with her position on the pitch. And her ability to stay calm and under control has really impressed him. Leaning heavily on the top goals against average keeper in the AAC, the American Athletic Conference. That'll be a neat race for all conference keeper this year. Who wins it between Maeve English, who's been really good, and then her counterpart, Samantha Estrada of SMU. That'll be a fascinating all-conference race. If you go back to the regular season, it's Maeve English with the advantage, a 2-1 win. As here's a foul on Chloe Lazell. She tripped up Sidney Schnell. And a yellow card is issued here in the early minutes. 17th minute card. Yep, and a clear tripping on Laszlo, the SoCon all-freshman team performer. We told you that Mark Buda would be a busy man tonight, our lead referee in the mid-80s temperature-wise. So certainly a bit nicer than we've seen in the previous weeks here in the first weekend of fall. How about that? An in-state matchup. As Lowry chips it back post. Mr. Target. Second chance, Brzezinski deflected. And Radol is tipped away. Good pressure from Ferguson there. A high pressing unit. And a defender who scored her first career goal on Thursday. Would love to add to that total. Greensboro's but on its heels for most of this match, trying to stop an offense that has found its rhythm this year. East Carolina Pirates, 13 goals in 11 matches, led by Carson Parker. She has four, but is not suiting up in this first half tonight. 
So a back post chip is headed right to Buckholz. And Abbott tried to force one in. What a service, though, by McDougal. And that's right on target. And that's officially the second shot on goal in this matchup for East Carolina. Not a down by Schnell. That 69th minute game winner for Ferguson was all the difference. The Pirates were outshot in the first half, but they took advantage of their chances. As here's Ferguson beating the line, sending a nice through ball to Brzezinski and fought off by Chloe Laszlo. That's the presence of Ferguson, the true freshman. Can outrun the entire team. One of the best athletes on this group, according to Coach Gary Higgins. And you see it on that play right there. The throw to Schnell, who chips it back. Centered in for Holbrook, who tips it through and waits. And we have the offside flag up. Hard to tell from that angle, but it looked to be offside. I think this will show a better picture. Yep. It's been a busy few weeks for our ESPN Plus production crew, so we want to thank them tonight. Carrying a lot of home soccer, volleyball, and football early in the year. They've done a great job. As they're going to reset the game clock here. Ooh, a little tea party. How about that? Put some sweet tea in mine, and I'll, I'll join you guys in the second half. Told you the temperature's pretty nice. Low 80s, first weekend in fall. Another home football weekend for the East Carolina Pirates. Four straight home football games. UNC Greensboro gearing up for football season. Top 25 men's program in a... Women's team that's won two titles in the last five years there in Greensboro. Promising ball forward by Morton. Touch through for Gilhol, and she couldn't play it on the one-timer. Michael Cole put it best. Our offense runs as Maddie Gilhol goes. You see her right there. Not against the all-conference keeper, Maeve English. In fact, East Carolina in this park or in this facility they have had quite a season only four goals allowed at home really tough to score on oh Gilhold nearly got one off the arm of Soa the counter attack ability of the Spartans is really good and earn a throw love when the local youth teams can help out from time to time That's what will make the upcoming Olympics and World Cup in the United States so fascinating, those two tournaments. See the youth of the game. Think back to the 98 champions with Julie Foudy and crew in the Rose Bowl. That really sparked a generation of soccer players. I imagine this next crew will do much the same, if not more, with social media. Mike Miles, our director in TD, is keeping us very entertained tonight with fan shots. I appreciate that. More than just soccer at times. A lot of stories that go on here. Okay, here's the question. Do you do butter, popcorn, butter? Or do you go butter on top and let it just sink in and kind of melt it to the bottom of the bucket? It's the important questions in life that get you through this first half. Thanks for joining us here at ESPN Plus. Evan Budgerich here. Our production crew led by Will Bailey operating the show tonight. A little 
the game, a header back and forth. I think a handball was there. Sort of threw Peyton Godby off, and that leads to a free kick for Greensboro. UNCG capitalized on two set-piece goals against VMI on Friday night. Pitched their second shutout of the year, and more importantly, scored three big ones against the key debts of VMI. Busy weekend of travel up to Lexington, Virginia. Now back here to Greenville. Sent in back post and overshot the target of Delaney Stevens. Isn't that adorable right there? East Carolina without the services of Carson Parker for this first half and probably the rest of the night. She'll rest to gear up for conference on Thursday. No injury related. The good news is Gary Higgins has been proud of his depth and he wants to test that tonight as this stays on side. Numbers in the box for East Carolina. Turning in is Schnell. Centering to Brzezinski. And freed out. Back to McDougal. Macy chips in. Loose ball. Shots. Oh, it's tipped away. And Buckholtz saves a nearly goal-scoring opportunity. That was Annabelle Abbott with the promising chip. And we'll see it again. That ball had some English on it. I don't know. That might have snuck underneath. The crossbar. I don't know. What you guys see in that football game last night, Texas A&M, Arkansas, the ball hit the top of the upright and it bounced out. Hope that's not a factor tonight as here's the corner from Lowry. Goes back post, chipped in, headed through and on top of the net. Nice combination play to Catherine Holbrook. The first flick is excellent by Soa. And Holbrook's in great position to score here. Just snuck in front of Buckholtz, but could not finish. You see the shot totals. That's been the story. Lots of chances for the home squad tonight. Greensboro on the counter. A long ball near side to Santora. Gabby inside the 18. Centers. Still loose, played back by Stevens. Sakura chips in. Nice header away by McDougal. Here's Herrera. Now a chip in, headed down, and Morton knocks it wide. Good opportunity there from the Spartans. UNC Greensboro last year, and this is key to their offense. 12 total goals, assisted by 12 different players. No one with more than one assist, and all 12 a big factor in this offense. This year, much the same story, but it's really been led by Maddie Gilhul, her five goals and 11 points. That's the difference for UNC Greensboro this year. As Annabelle Abbott runs into space, she plays it out wide to Brzezinski. The back line of UNC Greensboro has been really good, led by Laszlo and Hackett, limiting any opportunities, especially in the run of play. Good leap by the head referee, Mark Buda. Maeve English, if she pitches another shutout tonight, she might be in line for the AAC Goalkeeper of the Week Award. Big win over Houston on Thursday and has done another nice job tonight. Looking for her sixth shutout of the season as Brzezinski wiggles into the box. Brooke looks to center, keeps her footing. Brzezinski lost it inside the 18. And back now to Godby. Peyton keeps possession on the pressure of Santora. 
God be out wide to Schnell. Sydney penetrates, beats her defender. Schnell into the 18, centers and deflected Laszlo. That is quickly cleared by UNC Greensboro. So nearing the 30th minute in, good opportunity for the Pirates started by Schnell. And that is one touch away from being in dangerous position. Nice ball deflected by Lowry. Abbott pitches it back. And numbers really committed back for Michael Cole's defense. He was a four-year defender and midfielder at Penn State, two-time All-Big Ten, and an All-American selection for the Nittany Lions. And it's a sloppy turnover there from Greensboro. Part of a four-game homestand here in Greenville. It's been a successful home campaign. One and one in the homestand, and they have four home wins already, which matches last year's total entirely. So we see Grace Doran there check in, the captain, Redshirt Sr. Gutierrez and Brzezinski take their rest for the final 16, and then Taylor Kibble, the Redshirt sophomore, comes into midfield as well. Ooh, an immediate foul. That might be a card here on Siani Ricks. Okay, no, just a free kick. Good turn on the ball here from Kibble, immediately entering the game and making an impact. Redshirt sophomore who last played against Old Dominion. It's been a few weeks back on the end of August. So Lowry, who's been a big part of the offense, looks to center this ball in. Chips middle. And flung down by Schnell. Back now to McDougal. Macy looks to turn wide. Good long ball to Schnell, who's onside. Schnell plays middle and dispossessed. But gives it right back to Doran. Here's Lowry in space. Out to Godby. One on one with Ricks. And Siani Ricks sneaks in, takes it away. Ricks with the open field. Has a striker to her left in Gilhul. Chips it onside. Uh, Gilhul ran out of gas. And how about this move here by Siani Ricks? The most determined player on the roster, according to Michael Colley. Loves her aggressiveness and breaks the all SOCON honoree in her senior year. A menace on defense, he notes, for the five foot two senior. As Greensboro shifts its line to a three forward attack, that three, four, three, three alignment. East Carolina, more of a five, three, two, one, if you will. Into space, Herrera sends it out to Ricks. That touch a bit ambitious in the throw here for East Carolina. Siani Ricks, a neat story. Her sister played at Old Dominion. They met earlier this year. And Siani actually played on this pitch just a month prior, August 28th. Her team lost 3 0 against the home squad, East Carolina, at the end of August. And here we are now nearing the end of September. Final game of non-conference play tonight, and we are all scoreless 30 minutes in. Holbrook looks to play in space. Finds Abbott. And a bell middle touch to Kibble, who is quickly dispossessed by Sakura. McDougal chips in. And bodies coming forward for the Pirates. Good touch up by Herrera. Mel turns on the ball and has numbers. Here's Santora. Nice touch by Godby. Excellent dispossession. And a defense for East Carolina that ranks in the top 40 in the country in goals against average. Trying to top Mississippi State as one of the best scoring defenses in the land. Big reason why Gary Higgins Club has started 7-3-1. Their best start in nearly a decade.
nonetheless, Greensboro stood up to the assignment. Holding ECU to just two shots on target, and maybe one here as Holbrook gets the dispossession. Plays it to herself, and here's Holbrook penetrating the box. Swiped away by Sakura. Parker Sakura, her heart rate must be extremely high. Her work rate as well has been everywhere tonight. Testing that left flank for the Spartans. Uh, pitched a shutout on Friday. So a tough turnaround minutes-wise. Friday in Lexington, Virginia. Before Greensboro gears up to face the preseason favorite Sanford on Friday night. That'll be a real difficult test. You look in the country at toughest opponent's schedule, which ranks their record, their RPI, all that stuff. Duke has the toughest schedule in the country, and Duke has played both of these teams in the first week of the year here at Greenville. A win over the Pirates and then a win over Greensboro 3-1 to one, just a few days later. Gary Higgins noted that those performances against Duke and South Carolina, while his team lost both, it has built a ton of confidence heading into the AAC play. That's why his club now has nationally ranked wins over SMU and an impressive win over Houston on Thursday. Their best start in the conference since 2012. Abby Solo, one of the captains of this club, sends it forward for Annabelle Abbott, chasing his Buckholz out of her own keeper position. Bow outside the 18, makes the play. The footwork of Buckholz has been highly regarded by this Greensboro staff. Solo comes forward, moves into the midfield role, beats her defender. Sola. Dispossessed. Boy, Sakura has done everything right. This time, though, lays it in a dangerous spot for Buckholz, who clears. Look at Holbrook's facing up goal. And wisely plays it outside. Here's Schnell. The charging McDougal wants it. Schnell turns for goal. Lays it off to Doran. Doran beats Stevens. Doran in the 18 centers and outside. Now the pitch for the Morgan Brubaker. So this ball is more intended to be chipped in than shot on target. It's just a missed touch there for ECU. How about this ball in open space for Sierra Lowry? Sends it out to Kibble. Maybe not the numbers as Radol comes back and is able to win the ball. Liza, the senior captain, three-year starter on defense there with a nice play. A back line that returns all four starters from the 2021 campaign. Greensboro was really good defensively. Six draws. And five of those scoreless draws, a 4-8-6 and six record. And remember, last year in women's college soccer, overtime was a factor. So those were extended performances, not just 90 minutes. Those could be 120 of scoreless soccer. The Spartans lost in the semifinals of the SOCON tournament to eventual champions Mercer, who took down Sanford. That was an upset. Ricks tussling with Doran. Michael Cole challenged his club of Greensboro to be more physical tonight and really press this East Carolina team. Ooh, now a loose ball in the box. Recovered! And Maeve English with a last second denial. Boy, Gilhu had a chance to make it 1 0. So a sloppy touch by Soa. Leaves it one on one. And this will set up a penalty kick. The foul on English. And now Santora heads to the penalty strike for the PK.
first penalty kick attempt for Santora. English looks to hold her position. Can the senior give UNC Greensboro a 1-0 lead late in the first half? She can. Upper 90 for Gabby Santora, her fourth career goal as the Spartans strike first on the penalty kick. No chance for Maeve English. Perfect finish from Santora. First goal allowed by Maeve English in two matches. Tough to blame on the keeper there, but she had to defend her team on a dispossession. So a 37th minute goal is the difference. There's a whistle and a foul on Mel Herrera. Gary Higgins noted this week his team's ability with three come from behind wins in the last three weeks. He's been uberly impressed with his club's tenacity in the second half, scoring late goals. You look at wins over George Mason, Florida, and SMU all in the final 10 minutes. It's part of this streak of points in seven of the last eight. But up against it now, done 1 0 to reach the final seven minutes of this first half. Played back to English who just committed the foul in the box a moment ago, giving up the penalty kick. Siani Ricks is like a wrecking ball in there. She fights for everything. And Sakura forced to play it back. Long boot, Buckholtz, and Soa sends it forward to Doran. The captain turns on the ball. Touch now Holbrook, who can't find it. And Abbott plays it back. ECU's controlled possession in this half, yet trail 1 0. Here's McDougal. Macy on the ball. Nice run to the box. McDougal wants space. Hops over Herrera and finds Godby. Godby chips in. Here's a streaking striker in Moxie. And a goal kick. Samantha Moxie came storming in. And this could have been an excellent response. It's a beautiful run by Moxie and just couldn't get a foot on it. Did everything right. If only she had flippers for arms, she could have kicked that in with her forearms there. During that goal kick, Ava Chris checked in. Sorry, Ava Kiss checked in for UNC Greensboro, the Las Vegas product, true freshman midfielder. Number six in the Navy. You'll see her tonight. Navy blue and gold versus the purple and white. I like the color contrast. As Ricks plays it along to Stevens, who's immediately bombarded by pressure. Ricks looks to turn on the ball. Shields off Soa. Hard touches for the Spartans tonight as Laszlo. Finds middle relief with Brubaker. Stevens. Not many options, so Stevens presses forward. And knocked down by Herrera. Nine back for East Carolina defensively. A turn on the ball. Loose deflection. Look for a 2-0 lead, and it's through. 
What a conversion. Ava Kiss, the freshman, takes advantage inside the 18. First career goal for Ava Kiss, and her bench knew it. An immediate contributor on this second chance goal. Kiss able to shield off Sydney Schnell and then take advantage. How about this week alone for Greensboro? Three goals on Friday, two more tonight, and a resurgent response from the road squad. Oh, on the counterattack. So on the touch to Abbott. Annabelle has been marked by Sakura all night. Gary Higgins noted this week, avoiding complacency, but also playing on the front foot. Well, his club has quickly vaunted into a 2-0 deficit after dominating much of this first half. So we'll send it along to Moxie. And Buckholtz there to easily clean up. UNC Greensboro entered this week scoring just seven goals. They have accounted for five goals in the last two matches. As Stevens plays it along, good through ball for Sakura. Parker chips in towards English, who's there. And after conceding two goals, Maeve English stands firm inside her own six. The first goal more out of self-defense for English. The second, a good run by Kiss to sneak through the box and tough to defend. Nonetheless, she's conceded her most goals has Maeve English in over a month. Have to go back to the South Carolina match, third match of the year for those issues. Can't put this one on English tonight. She needs some help. And there's plenty of time with at least 45 minutes to go. And throw in here for ECU. I think we have a lost soccer ball. That look there for Gary Higgins tells the story. A bit of frustration in the opening 45. Lowry. Ferguson, good chip away from Sophie Jolly, the true freshman in on defense. And Rex wins possession in midfield. Rex with numbers, has Brubaker ahead, kiss to her right. Goes right back to Rex, who's lost by Doran. And one for Abbott. Bodies everywhere at the middle of the pitch here late in the half. Closing minutes. One minute remaining in the half, one minute. Played in space to Ava Kiss, final minute. Kiss off her first career goal, sends it wide. Now centered, English tips it away. And maybe saves the third as it's headed down to Kiss. And deflected free Lowry. Back out to Stevens. Chances are plenty for the Spartans as this is shot long. And maybe the final opportunity of the first half. Nadia Wilson let it fly for the sophomore defender. Ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, a goal in the 37th minute by Santora and the 41st minute finish by Ava Kiss has put the home squad in a 2-0 deficit. What adjustments will Gary Higgins' squad have for East Carolina? How can UNC Greensboro continue its best scoring week of the season? When we come back, we'll have highlights and conversation around the AAC and the SOCON as UNC Greensboro off to a 2-0 start. We'll have plenty more from Johnson Soccer Stadium after this. Hello and welcome into the American Studios. I'm Hello and welcome into the American Studios. I'm Morgan Uber. Each and every week we count down the five best plays from the court, the pitch, the gridiron. And this week we start with some men's soccer conference action at number five, UCF at Temple. Robbie Sorinalis, the freshman, fires off a long range shot and that is a goal. Dino Vivi turning some defense and offense to set up his freshman teammate, scoring his first career goal as a Knight. More Temple men's soccer at number four. The Owls hosting St. Peter's in the Temple offense. Breaks things open with Sawyer Koza with a bicycle kick goal. The cross from Mike Eigendahl into the box and Koza gets a foot on it plus some style points and the Owls win 3-1. At number three, Cincinnati, Miami of Ohio. The battle for the victory bell knotted up 17 all and it's a jump ball for Nick Mardner right over the head of a Red Hawks defender on a 10-yard fade and since he finished on top 38-17. Coming in at number two, Jacksonville State at Tulsa. The nation's passing leader Davis Brin takes a shot. It's nearly picked off, but Keelan Stokes with a heads-up play. Stokes off the ricochet and hauls it in for a TD. The Golden Hurricane win big, 54-17. Some women's soccer for you at number one, number 19 SMU hosting East Carolina. It's the Pirates, Lindsey Aiken to Sydney Shell with some fancy footwork and Annabelle Abbott with the finish. 
the little back heel flip from Schnell, and that right there might just be the goal of the year. If you see a top play happen live, be sure to let us know on social media. You can use the hashtag American Top Plays and tweet at the American Conference at American underscore comp. We'll get you out to second half action right after this. Keep it locked in here on ESPN+. Plus. Oh, God. Big collision. Ooh, ooh. Almost. Right. Okay. Cool. Hello and welcome into the American Studios. I'm Morgan Uber. Earlier this week, the conference announced the weekly award winners in men's and women's soccer and volleyball. And let's take a look now at the very best right here in American's Best. Freshman forward Jordan Frederick was a star for Tulsa this past week, scoring the game winners in back-to-back -back matches. She was named the American's Offensive Player of the Week in women's soccer. The Golden Hurricane picked up its first conference win 1-0 over Temple and followed up with another 1-0 win over Oral Roberts. In men's soccer, Memphis keeper Colin Welsh earned the goalkeeper of the week honors after a 1-0 upset over number 12 SMU. The sophomore came away with five saves and a clean sheet in the win, helping the Tigers to a 1-0 start in conference play. UCF's McKenna Melville was named the Offensive Player of the Week after finishing with six and a half points per set in three wins over number 23 Kansas, Omaha, and Lipscomb. Melville totaled 60 kills over the three matches, and with that, she broke the Knights' career kills record with 2,156. The previous record of 2,151 had stood for 25 years. Another major milestone in the conference was hit over the weekend. East Carolina quarterback Holton Aylers became the Americans career passing leader with 11,019 yards in the 49 to 10 win over Campbell. Head coach Mike Houston said after the game Aylers has been that steady constant, a phenomenal role model and a great leader for the program. We'll get you out to second half action right after this. Keep it locked in here on ESPN+.
Gearing up for the start of the second half here in Greenville. 2-0 lead for UNC Greensboro early on. So we'll show you how we got those two goals early because both teams had their semblance of chances. And only in the first 30 minutes, it was East Carolina with the better of the opportunities. We'll see some of these first half highlights early. Couple of chances on set pieces. And maybe the best chance here for Isabella Gutierrez. Little deflected ball and she couldn't get a foot on it. And then a great header by Abbott, but it goes right into the midst of Buckholtz, who was busy, and then a little deflection here. That was offside. And the first goal of the half on the penalty kick for Gabby Santora. She drew the penalty and took advantage. And then two minutes later, Ava Kiss just inserted into the match, splits three, and on the ricochet ball, she finds the back of the net. That's the first career goal for the true freshman. And that's really been the difference in this first half. Two goals, couple of second chance looks. And overall in stats, pretty even, right? Five shots for each team. Fouls, relatively even, but the difference here, Greensboro got the shots on target and they did not miss. We noted the final non-conference matchup and it kind of shows both teams have different lineups in tonight. Maybe not at full depth, but give the Spartans a ton of credit. There's the keeper, Buckholtz, who's been clutch, and then Santora has been excellent, nodding her fourth career goal, and not only earning that penalty kick, but being a major factor. There you see Gabby entering towards her team's huddle. Greensboro team had scored three goals on Friday, and they've added to it. Talking about Gabby Santora this week, her head coach, Michael Cole, said she's the calming presence we need on this team. When Gabby can settle as that central midfielder we can be so much effective on offense and she drew that penalty and took advantage with the PK and then shortly after helped to uh, score that second goal for the Spartans. Questions aplenty for the Pirates here in this second half after a fantastic start to conference play. How will they right the ship if you will? in this second half because this is a team that has shown in the American Athletic they can be really good. Two wins against two of the top half of the league coming in and their last two non-conference matches, William & Mary and then tonight against Greensboro. It's been up and then down and finding that consistency will be a big question for Gary Higgins over the next and final 45 minutes. As here we go, Mel Herrera will get this game started. And now in the second half, when scoring two or more goals, the Spartans are 4-0-1 this year, have been really good. The Pirates, when allowing two or more goals, it's been rare, just once, 0-1 on the tally. And more pressure here from Siani Ricks, who sprints in towards the 18. Ricks sends it out wide, and already a corner kick drawn as that's cleared. Pressure on this East Carolina defense. Gary Higgins, he's going to go deep into his bench tonight. And we see Sophia Serrano at that defensive position. So here's Gabby Santora, nine career assists, and sends it in. Low line drive, headed up into the air by Soa. Knocked down. Ricks plays it. Shot on target. Radol lets it fly. And sent out into space back to Laszlo. Brzezinski sniffs it out and sent long by Lowry. Schnell now playing without her countermate. Looks for Gutierrez and overshoots her. Remember, Carson Parker not playing tonight for East Carolina due to rest. This is a non-conference matchup, of course. And both these teams gear up for conference play. UNC Greensboro will take on league favorite Samford on Friday. And East Carolina, they will host... Pardon me, they will continue the homestand and host Tulsa on Thursday night before hitting the road for three of the next four.
Ricks thought she had a handball, and it is called. Even though it's incidental, it does still hit her arm. It was a very confident Michael Cole, the former All-American midfielder at Penn State. He noted these teams the last two years have lost their striking ability with the graduation of Sierra Rideout, a 30-goal scorer in her career. But it's been by team effort. The five goals by Gilhol certainly part of the story, but when seven different players have scored a goal for Greensboro, they have a little more depth. You had a first goal from Ava Kiss tonight, and that is a big difference. Holbrook sends it forward and knotted away by Radol, resulting in a throw. Hard to find chances for East Carolina tonight outside of the first 25 minutes. And maybe a surge here for Serrano. Oh, nice touch off the video board there for Sakura. Not a long for Schnell and Buckholtz outside her post there to collect it. Abby Buckholtz, the athletic of the two keepers gets the start over Emma Malone tonight and she has been tested the two shots on target part of it but also she has played outside her zone a bunch playing balls at her feet and collecting balls in the 18. Brzezinski is immediately doubled. And that'll stay in play. Kept alive by the Pirates. Holbrook sends it out. McDougal chips it back in, and that stays in play. Here to Brzezinski. East Carolina desperate for a shot on target. It's been since the 25th minute they've put any pressure on Buckholz. Soa sends it middle. Schnell plays it back to Soa. Here's a charge for Abbott, who lets it fly. And Buckholtz calmly collects. This was a question that Gary Higgins had of his club. Could they operate outside the 18 and create second chances on Buckholtz? Have not had many tonight. One or two deflections, and that was back in the first half. Wisely played by Nadia Wilson and sent forward to Ricks. When it comes to rotations, Michael Cole put it best. Our team has forced to play deep into its bench. That's the realm of women's college soccer as Stevens charges the 18, sends it middle, and overshoots Gilhul. The Spartans on average seven substitutes a game, so they will expand the bench. And with a Friday-Sunday schedule in Southern Conference play, you almost have to keep bodies fresh. East Carolina and American Athletic Thursday Sunday schedules and Gary Higgins electing to give Carson Parker the night for rest. And no whistle here just to throw in as Brzezinski pleads her case like a receiver fighting for defensive pass interference. I think that was more just a misstep and a little bump than anything else nothing intended. McDougal, ooh, nearly lost it. Had to play that line, oh, so close. As Santora turns, she scored the 37th minute. Right now, go ahead and leading goal on the penalty kick. Did a great job splitting the defense and earning the PK. As Ferguson charges on late, lowers the shoulder, and a foul on Ferguson. As she retreats, and a free kick here for Greensboro. It's 
So here's the collision. Oh, boy, Jasmine Ferguson. She got to the ball first, but came in reckless. And that's where the official will call her for it. Mark Buda. Greensboro, one of the top 50 teams in the country, most fouls per game. Them and East Carolina will both issue their fair share. As Santora slots it in. And head of the way nicely. There was McDougal. East Carolina, in fact, leads the American seven fouls committed per match. Now, part of that slows down an opposing attack and limits the pace. You live with that as long as it doesn't lead to penalty kicks or opportunities like we saw tonight with a goal on the PK. By the way, that was the first penalty kick goal scored by UNC Greensboro. It was the first allowed by Maeve English on the penalty kick. That's been the difference in a mid-80s, slightly windy night here in Greenville. But otherwise, great conditions on the first weekend in fall. And final night of non-conference play as the throws awarded to the home squad. Gary Higgins told us this week his squad must find a way to play at a conference-level performance tonight. If they want to win in the postseason, they have to take every match with the same effort and intensity as we saw on Thursday night against Houston and previously against SMU just a week prior. He noted his team did not have that intensity last Sunday and a loss to William & Mary 1-0. They're falling into the same trap here tonight. This is sent forward to Wilson. Nadia slots it off the arm of Ferguson and a free kick awarded right outside the 18. Let's confirm here. Ferguson, yep, she was outside the box and tried to pull away at the last moment. So Santora in dangerous position here. Looks to add to a 2 0 lead. Delivers. Back post. Back to Wilson. She shoots over the top. English did not get a hand on it, but oh, so close. Heck of an angle here. Whew. This might be our best look. Right into, okay, not the camera. Protect the camera at all costs. Great replays executed tonight. A lot of chances on target. And Gary Higgins now taking a quick sip of Gatorade as he tries to find his club's offense in this second half. He noted set pieces have been crucial to his team's success. And tonight, they haven't had many opportunities. Just two shots on target against Buckholz, who's been active outside her post. Here's a long ball for Gutierrez that's quickly erased by Mel Herrera. Love this angle here. It gives you a glimpse of the defensive alignment for Greensboro. As Schnell looks to turn. Plays it middle. Shot towards Buckholz is deflected. And a nice shot by East Carolina. Abbott put it on target. Actually, it was Holbrook who lines this up. A little dipping shot. Foul drawn by Gutierrez. It's a crafty play for the true freshman who spent the first three weeks of the season playing for the U-20 Mexican national team. She came back and scored a goal in her first match. Now has two goals and an assist early in her tenure. That's the presence East Carolina will need tonight. Without Carson Parker, where will the goal scoring come from? Top striker, four goals. Not playing tonight due to rest. So McDougal feeds it back to English. Who coming off her fifth shutout of the season allows two goals one via penalty kick and one on a run of play opportunity now Abbott sprints in has Gutierrez to her right 
Abbott plays it that way, slots it in. And freed away by Laszlo. Here's Lowry. Soa, who had a tough first half, defensively flings it wide for the freshman Serrano. Sofia chips it in. Knocked down Brzezinski and cleared. Good footwork by Radol to knock that out. And that young assistant is right on it. Youth soccer player here in Greenville. What a neat moment to see your role models just a few years older playing the game that you fall in love with. Serrano looks to turn on target and Holbrook's dispossessed. Here's Gutierrez. Holbrook chips into the box for Schnell, headed down. And touched loose for a corner. So Buckholtz will face her first real test. First corner kick for East Carolina tonight. The drums are banging so much, it's hard to keep the camera steady. What do you like to see? A little intensity from this home crowd. Excellent home atmosphere here in Greenville. And Sierra Lowry tees up this corner. Lowry slots it in to the front of the post, headed up. And Buckholds lets it sky over her head. Searching for Jasmine Ferguson there, who delivered the game winner on Thursday. Now entering the pitch. A smart number five, Morgan A couple of substitutes re-enter. Grace Doran here 15 minutes into the second half. And Siani Ricks takes a breather for Greensboro as Morgan Brubaker re-enters. To be expected in this final non-conference matchup, plenty of players will make their presence felt tonight. As a foul here called by our head referee, Mark Buda. Yep, and a clear foul there on Schnell. Lozell able to draw it as the ball sent in. Soa knocks it away, but in a dangerous position. Wow, Abbott nearly lost it and won by the Pirates. Good pressure up top by Maddie Gilhul, the second leading scorer in the Southern Conference. She chases Kendall Cook of Mercer, who has five goals this year. Sorry, six goals now. Five is for Gilhul. East Carolina playing without one of its top goal scorers. Carson Parker, who has four. Chasing Julius Cisneros of SMU for the conference lead and goal scored. So can Gutierrez fill the gap with a sending ball into Schnell? Heads it towards target. And a goal kick. Promising opportunity, but not much on target here 15 minutes into this second half. So we need that second ball or that back post player to really make a presence. Buckhold sends it long, and Soa heads it forward. UNC Greensboro searching for its third shutout of the year and the second of the week. The Spartans have plenty to play for in the Southern Conference, facing conference leader Sanford on Friday, who actually lost just two days prior to the Citadel. And to put that in perspective, the Citadel voted eighth in the Southern Conference. Sanford, the league favorites coming in, and it's Citadel who won the match 1-0. Michael Cole, the head coach there, telling us that his club could win this league as much as any of the other nine teams. With a couple of home matches against Chattanooga and Sanford coming up. Furman second in the preseason. That'll be a neat match in the middle of October. It's 
much as the A's sees wide open one through four, the SoCon may be open one through nine. <laughs> There's a lot of competition. I mean, think about this. The three league favorites, Sanford, Furman, and Mercer, all start with losses to begin the conference season. All 0-1. Three teams at the bottom all picked up wins. Lowry looks to turn. She has been tightly contested by Eliza Radol, the all-conference defender. The preseason all-conference team dominated by Mercer and Furman defenders, including Isabella Gutierrez, no relation, out of Furman. Nice move, Doran. Gray sends it outside. Promising ball deflected and a throw in for East Carolina. So here's Sophia Serrano trying to navigate for her head coach. Road heavy for the Pirates, including at league favorite Memphis and at UCF. A couple of busy weeks as Higgins disappointed in that throw. It goes the wrong way. If East Carolina can continue its 2-0 start, they have a chance to host the conference tournament, which begins October 30th, so about a month from now on Sunday. And you see both head coaches, Scottish and Irish, having good discussions back and forth, trying to guide their programs in this second half. That international UK flavor made for our pregame conversations really entertaining, but also informative. Ooh, Buckholz shanked it. There's Michael Cole, grew up in Dublin, Ireland, won 69 matches in his first eight years. Best start ever for UNC Greensboro women's head coach. He had in two tournament titles, and he is calm, cool, and collected on that bench. He noted his team is finally coming to form in the win Friday over VMI. How can their defense hold the part? They have limited East Carolina to just two shots on target. As Abby Soa, who's been the center of attention with a couple of mishaps on the defensive end, plays it forward. Chanel turns on Lawsell, who clears it out. Nice defense. She has not started. In two weeks against Elon was her last performance, but playing very well on the back line tonight. It's punch forward and a goal kick awarded. It's been the story for East Carolina. Not many chances. Hard to play without Carson Parker, who's out with rest tonight. And Holly Schlegel, who is a central midfielder, she is gone for the season with a knee injury. So some new faces in these roles. You see the positivity there from Gary Higgins. Schlegel, one on four. And that's the challenge for this East Carolina squad as, as much as they play well in the conference. This team will have a different formation moving forward and have to battle being the hunted versus the hunters. With a 2-0 start, their best in 10 years in the American Athletic. UNC Greensboro was able to play its best match on Friday. We're seeing a much more confident Greensboro squad looking to win two straight, and that has been rare for Greensboro. Be the first two-match win streak of the season for the Spartans. Touch there by Stevens to win the ball and send it out wide. First time we've called Caroline Wood's name tonight there in the neon sneakers, shoots it outside to Sakura. Parker slots it up to Kiss. And a little contact there, ball kept in. Woods goes middle, turning. Brubaker rolls it into Soa. And Brzezinski on the counter. So many numbers committed back for East Carolina. It takes a while to initiate the counterattack. 
And that gives Greensboro time to slot back its defense. Here's Abbott looking for Doran. Nice touch forward. But shoot free by Rodol. Here's Woods. Staying on side is Gutierrez. Has numbers behind her. Looks middle and a goal kick. It took till the 69th minute for East Carolina to score on Thursday night. Much the same story here on Sunday, but facing a 2-0 deficit, a much tougher task against Abby Buckholz, who searches for her sixth shutout of the senior's career. All-time record of 14-12-1 for the four-year starting keeper, who has played behind the all-conference standout, Ayana Tyler Cooper, who now plays in Spain. And she finished with 11 shutouts in her career, second most in Greensboro history. So an elite keeper graduates, and now Buckholz gets the full-time starting gig in her final year. She lived up to it tonight. Our defense has been excellent as well. Schnell cannot turn face. Ava Kiss comes out with it. Michael Cole told us this week he was proud of the team's three goals, but he was more impressed with the club's ability to overcome a desperate and hungry VMI squad on its home pitch and really form a great defensive shell to pitch the 3-0 shutout. Just the second clean sheet. And a conference play against a team that was winless that can be difficult to beat an opponent you should. Here's McDougal looking to counter the 2-0 deficit, but she rolls it out of play. So another goal kick award, and this is another example of where East Carolina has not been able to put opportunities on net. Now entering the pitch for the Pirates. Number three, Samantha Moxie. And number 20, McKenna Gregory. So Sydney Schnell and Annabelle Abbott take a breather, what could be for the final 20 minutes. As Samantha Moxie and McKenna Gregory come in. It's worth noting with 20 minutes to play, this is just the second time all year East Carolina has surrendered two goals. And you have to go back to the opening week of the season, August 21st at South Carolina. The last time that number has been notched, and that was a top five team in South Carolina. Here's Brzezinski looking to counter, sends it middle, and that's set wide. Great timing touch to McKenna Gregory, who nearly slots her first. Now this is a promising ball by Brzezinski. And you couldn't have put it in a better spot for Gregory. With the injury to Holly Schlegel, Gregory will play a bunch more this year at that central midfield and number nine attacking position tonight. Moxie gets away with some contact. This is played back to Sakura. Woods chips into her last line of defense in LaSalle. And one by Lowry. A long ball here for Gregory. Now Moxie. Both a great name and a euphemism for a team. You got to have some Moxie in a second half. Brzezinski. Wheeling that ponytail around, trying to navigate through space. Oh, and the referee had it hit off his leg. It'll be East Carolina ball. A head referee can make this decision to stop play when he feels he interfered with possession. So ECU will keep, keep it here with 18 minutes to go. Ferguson slots it out to Brzezinski. Brooke, one-on-one, -on -one, beats her defender. Brzezinski turns, but can't keep it in play. A corner kick is awarded, and I'm surprised by this. 
Greensboro a bit befuddled. And the corner. Let's take another look here. Hackett on the chase. Huh. Well, that being said, a corner kick awarded. And Sierra Lowry looks to put East Carolina on the board. She has two assists on the year. And Lowry sends it in to the back post. One in the air by UNC Greensboro. The leaping ability of Parker Sikora there to win it. And a foul here on Ferguson, who then, in a frustration, turns Nadia Wilson. I think she'll earn a yellow card as well. And she does. A bit of frustration there for Ferguson. Yep, and there's where the card comes, right there. Second yellow card for East Carolina tonight. Now entering the pitch for the Spartans. Number two, Sophie So a trio of substitutes for UNC Greensboro. Gabby Santora. Santora returns, Horton re-enters. And Sophie Jolly comes back in for Greensboro. We noted both teams playing on short rest this weekend, so substitutes aplenty here in the final 16. Jolly sends it long, and an offside flag is up. What a great defensive effort for UNC Greensboro tonight. A club that pitched the shutout on Friday, they have continued that effort tonight. Okay, and the head referee stops the clock. Doesn't want a delay of game situation. It's the tricky navigation of working the clock and also playing situational football. You want to burn as much clock as you can, but do it in a strategic way, not to annoy the officials or you start having a clock stop every time it goes out of bounds. If you're stalling, is the official wording. Dangerous ball, and deflected by Kiss. Now a loose chase that results in a throw. This will allow the Spartans to come forward here with 15 minutes to play. McDougal. East Carolina in danger of not scoring for the second straight Sunday. This might change here as Holbrook turns on the ball. But kicks it out. Frustrating effort for... Coach Higgins' club tonight. Three shots on target, and not many chances of boot. Ball sent forward by Santora. Soa. She's looked for Holbrook all night, and they have not connected. East Carolina without its top goal scorer, Carson Parker, out via rest tonight. Who can fill those shoes? It's been a tough task. A couple of deflections, and Gregory turns on it. McKenna Gregory with that good chance for the freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, just a few minutes prior. Had a one-timer that she sent an inch or two wide of the post, and that could have easily made it a 2-1 match. And that's been the best of the chances for East Carolina tonight. Nicely sent free by the Greensboro back line, led by Eliza Badol. One of the three senior captains on this defense for the Spartans. Holbrook is on side. Moxie is crashing in. Sent away by Buckholtz. 
And a goal-saving stop. That's where the senior keeper can prove her worth. Because that ball had the back of the net written all over it. So the fifth corner kick upcoming for East Carolina. Lowry, line drive. Knocked down and deflected free. Moxie wants a shot, and she hit her own foot. Throw in East Carolina. Good deflection by Greensboro. This goes play back to Abby Soa. Look at that fastball thrown. Wow. Assistant coach Evan Gaffney, a former goalkeeper himself, and he launched one to keep play moving. Moxie wants to turn on ball. That's a smart de defense by Greensboro. Good job. Parker Sikora there to clear out space. Now entering the pitch for the Spartans, number 12, uh, Taylor Mitzer. And number 28, Nadia Wilson. Taylor Menser enters the match for the first time, number 12 in the Navy for Greensboro. You see her there, the true freshman. Started the season opener against Charlotte, but has been off the bench in her last six matches. And Nadia Wilson returns. A sophomore from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Here's Wilson with it as she plays it back to her keeper. Good response by Buckholtz, who has been tested more in this second half. Holbrook on the deflection, throw in UNC Greensboro. We noted the Spartans heading on to a big conference slate, hosting Sanford on Friday and then at hosting Chattanooga. Conference tournament begins start in November for UNC Greensboro, and they want to repeat success in 2018 and 17 as two-time conference tournament champions. 0-2 in the tournament. You can all change that with one performance. These teams have played a combined six tournament teams from a year ago, both notching wins over High Point, and then performances both against Duke. And Greensboro took on a really good top 15 Harvard team. East Carolina faced top five South Carolina on the road, so all two teams have been well prepared for this final non-conference bout. A little space here for Hannah Morton. And Greensboro, they've lived up to the task tonight, searching for a second straight win heading into the bulk of Southern Conference play. Sent wide Wilson. And now Brzezinski. Brzezinski with some speed. Shielded off by Taylor Menser. And a foul here on Brzezinski. Good touch on the ball for Morton. She chips it outside the 18 and sends it long. Hannah Morton with a promising touch. Wants her third career goal there and does work clock nonetheless. Soa on the long ball. Gregory wins it. And here's Doran. Doran outside to Brzezinski. Numbers in the box for East Carolina. As we approach nine minutes to play. Brzezinski looks to break her defender. And Wilson wins it. Doran heads it down. And in no man's land, Delaney Stevens comes up with it and plays keep away. Santora, who had the game-winning goal at the moment back in the 27th minute. Little penalty kick. Pardon me, 37th minute. And then five minutes later, Ava Kiss made it 2-0 late in the first half. That's been the difference tonight.
Gary Higgins pleading for a whistle. He won't get it. Greensboro very composed on the ball tonight. A through ball. He's played free for a goal kick. Brzezinski takes a breather and Gutierrez returns. She's been the second leading goal scorer for the Pirates this year. Two goals, two of which they'll need if they want to extend this match in the next seven minutes. Moxie. Ooh. A lot of contact and nothing called. One down by LaSalle. Nice touch middle to Sakura. There's a ripping shot and nearly a third. English deflects it wide. Or no, she did not get a touch on it, but promising there from Santora. That's a good looking shot and a great angle. Watch out. Oh, we got a catch. Did he get two feet in bounds, though? I think he's got to return that ball, though, is the only problem. And there you go. Time winding down for the home squad, though, tonight is Ferguson, who already has played on a yellow, weaves through three different players. She is elusive as a true freshman. And a sloppy pass goes out there from Grace Dorn. That look tells the story for Gary Higgins' club. Just not playing up to par tonight by his team standards. Of course, without Carson Parker, so there is a caveat to that, the top striker, but have yet to matriculate many chances. As Moxie's tripped on the ball, and a throw-in is awarded to Greensboro. Morton really does a great job winning the ball there. Loose ball. McGregory jumps over a defender. And it's sent wide. A chase here, won by Holbrook, resulting in a throw. Ooh. I'm mistaken. A throw for UNC Greensboro. Soa touches that a bit strong. Trying to change fields, change directions has been a, a struggle tonight for East Carolina. So we tick under five minutes to play. Soa with a long boot that again goes contrary to her plans. It's a challenge for any team playing down two goals. Where do you find offense when you need it? Especially when one team has committed so many bodies back. Flicked on to Doran. Played forward, looking for Gutierrez. And that'll result in the goal kick. So more time ticks off the clock. Michael Cole searches for his 75th win at UNC Greensboro. This club has responded well this week. 3-0 on Friday, a victory, and a nice performance tonight. There's Morton. Now a chance to play in space for Taylor Menser, the freshly inserted, inserted substitute.
You hear the chatter of playing to the corner and working clock if you're UNC Greensboro. Wanting a third shutout. The Spartans pitched six shutouts last year. Five of those resulted in draws. It was a team that was hard luck to score. And finishing right in the middle of the pack in the Southern Conference. Holbrook on a little bump of Wilson, earns a free kick, and play will resume right away. Because clock is more of the enemy than winning a foul here and there. So Maeve English to send it away. Gutierrez punches it outside. And one back to Serrano. Doran lost it and a counter chance with two minutes to play. More importantly, time takes off the clock for Greensboro. Here's Wilson. She'll run right to the corner. And work every second off the clock. Here's Santora. What a smart play as Santora actually earns the throw for Greensboro and a crafty play. That's a corner kick award and this might have just won the match effectively for Greensboro. Game-winning goal scorer right there, Santora with the penalty kick. As more clock continues to tick and tick and tick. Or if you're Chris Berman, tick, 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 tick. <laughs> As we hit the final minute. One minute remaining. One Another throw in for the Pirates. And actually a free kick is awarded. They'll just work clock here for UNC Greensboro. The fans in purple will watch their team drop to 7-4-1 and one with this defeat. 4-3 and three here at Johnson Stadium. And Greensboro will win its second straight to move to 5-4-1. In the seventh all-time meeting between these clubs. Chipped in by Morton. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. So that concludes the Sunday night matchup. UNC Greensboro, its second straight shutout. And the matchup of Greensboro and ECU. It's the Spartans with a 2-0 win. We'll come back with highlights and break it all down from Greenville as UNC Greensboro wins its second straight. We'll have more after this. The Spartans take advantage of the 2-0 win. Set up the PK.
Welcome back to Greenville, North Carolina, the seventh all-time meeting. Game seven, if you will, goes to UNC Greensboro, 2-0. So they would lead the all-time series 4-3. A match that started a bit slow in the first 30 minutes, but late in the first half, UNC Greensboro took advantage with two goals. And we'll show you all the highlights from tonight because early on, East Carolina with a ton of chances. Really testing Abby Buckholds, who pitches her sixth career shutout. There's two quality looks on target. But then this play by Abby Soa leads to a wide open chance. Maeve English has to trip up Santora, who puts advantage. Gabby Santora with the game winner right there in the 37th minute. The penalty kick goal. How about this, though? Five minutes later, Ava Kiss, freshly inserted into the match, beats not one but two and slips by Lowry on this deflection and beats English her first career goal for the true freshman. We go back to the second half, and what a promising chance there. But could not convert is McKenna Gregory. So that made it 2-0, and that was it. UNC Greensboro moves above 500 for the first time all season, 5-4-1. And, and the big note you see there at the bottom, most goals allowed by ECU since facing top five South Carolina on August 21st. The good news for both these squads, it's non-conference play. So the big heavy hitters begin early this week. But how about Greensboro? Two straight shutouts and a nice performance tonight for that 2-0 victory. Beautiful Sunday night to start the opening week of fall and a beautiful weather here in Greenville. But for UNC Greensboro, defense was clutch. Penalty kicks took advantage in a 2-0 victory. For our production crew, I'm Evan Budgerbridge saying good night from Greenville. This is a presentation of ESPN. UNC Greensboro, not the 2-0 win.